This conference will now be recorded. Hey guys, this is Naveen here. Welcome back to Naveen Automation Labs and welcome back to this Java questions and programming question series. So uh, today I'm going to cover <clears throat> a very important uh, programming question. That is, how will you find out the factorial number? Right? In mathematics, we have seen factorial numbers. So now, how will you find out the factorial number? What are the different ways? To find out the factorial number and uh, what are the different conditions you will handle and it's a very evergreen interview question at a time of interview if you are going for you know java interview or if you are going for automation so what do you mean the factorial number so factorial number means let's see i want to find out what is a factorial of three so factorial of three means i just need to write like this three multiply by two multiply by one is equal to six right same thing if i ask you what is a factorial of four so factorial of four is like this four multiply by three multiply by two multiply by one so it will be four threes are twelve twos are twenty four multiply by one it will be twenty four right so factorial of five five is equal to like this five multiply by four multiply by three multiply by two and then one so it will be 5 was uh, 23, uh, it will be 120, okay, sorry, 5, 20, 60, 60 multiplied by 2, it will be 120, and 120 multiplied by 1, so it will be 120, right? Same thing if I ask you what will be the factorial of 10, so it will be very difficult, like, because you have to write completely like 10, then multiply by 9, then multiply by 8, then multiply by 7, right? Up to multiply by 1, like this, right? 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, up to 1. And then you have to find out the factorial of 10. Same thing if I ask you what is the factorial of 1? The factorial of 1 is always 1, right? What is the factorial of 0? This is again a very important in mathematics. If you remember in your college time or your school time, Right, maybe in 10th standard, factorial 0 is always 1. So always remember factorial 0. Factorial of 0 is always 1. Right? So we have to cover these conditions, factorial 0 as well as greater than 0. So let's do that. And there are two ways. Factorial, find out the factorial number with the help of recursive and with the help of non-recursive. So what do you mean by recursion, right? Recursion also we will quickly. I'll tell you what do you mean by recursion. So first let's do it without recursion, right? So let's do it without recursive. Okay, Re without recursive or without, yeah, let's use simple for loop. Okay, so let's do it. How to do that? So I'll do one thing. I'll create a function. So let's see my function name is, uh, public and uh, this function let's see i'm creating initially void and the function name is fact okay fact or factorial whatever the function name you want to give and in this particular function i'll pass simple number integer number and i'll start a simple <clears throat> a for loop inside this for loop what gonna, i'm gonna do that i'll start like this int this so there are two ways either let's see i'm passing four so I can start like this, four, three, two, one, right? So I'll start with four and then every time I'll decrease, right? The number of the value of N. So four minus one, three, then three minus one, two or two minus one, one, or I can start from one actually up to the given number. So let's see the both the approaches. So let's see both the approaches. So I'll start with int I equal to, let's see one and then I less than equal to because we have to include the number also so i'm using equal to less than equal to and then i plus plus keep increasing like this right and then what i'm gonna do inside this function i'll declare one variable int uh, let's see fact variable right and then this or let's see to avoid the confusion i'll make this function name is factorial and i'll declare one variable int fact and then I'll simply use fact is equal to fact, okay, multiply by i, 
fact is equal to fact multiply by i and it's saying initialize a variable so i initialize a variable with let's see is equal to one first okay don't initialize with zero otherwise it will be it will be multiplied by zero and output will be zero so initialize with one now what i'll do once it is done i'll simple return return fact okay and instead of this int simple i'll use int over here okay so just a minute let me quit this okay so this is what i have written now see the logic very simple i'll call this function i'll pass let's see four four as numbers or so number equal to four factorial equal to one int i equal to one yes okay fine one less than four condition is satisfied yes it will come over here fact is equal to fact multiply by i so what is the value of fact fact is equal to one multiply by one so it will be one so the value of fact will be one fine again it will check <clears throat> right i plus plus so now this time i is equal to what i is equal to two two less than number yes condition is again satisfied and then it will check fact it means one multiply by two so it will be two right so one multiply by two right and then i plus plus so i will be three three less than four condition is again satisfied fact is equal to whatever the fact value three multiply by what right three multiply by c right so i mean one multiply by two two that was the initial value of factorial and now the current value of i is three now what okay i plus plus again so the moment you write i plus plus what will happen i equal to four four is less than equal to four yes condition is again satisfied and again fact is equal to this is the original value of fact now so three into two six multiply by one six multiply by four i is equal to four now so it will give you four three twelve into two twenty four into one twenty four so it will give you twenty four okay guys so let's see i'll call this particular function and uh, let's see i'm passing factorial of uh, I'll make it static so that I can call it directly. Okay, so factorial and I'll pass 4. Okay, and um, I'll simply do one thing factorial 4. So let's see. First, let's run it and let's see what happens. Okay, so I have to print it all over here somewhere. So let's see. I'll do one thing. A simple directly system dot out dot print ln factorial four I'll print so factorial four four will be given and then it will give you the exact output exact return and then I'm printing on the console so that I'll get the output so the factorial four is twenty four right guys so factorial four is twenty four fine so let's see our other conditions also let's see factorial one is it working for factorial one let's see so for factorial one, it is working. One is one, right? Okay. Now, this is the simplest way. You can do one more way that, okay, either you can start i equal to four and then every time you can decrease minus minus or for factorial zero also, you can put one condition that if number is equal to zero, immediately return what? So let's say I'll put a condition over here that if number equal to equal to zero then simple return what it will return one okay so if i'm passing let's see zero what happens let's see so if factorial zero it means zero i'm passing number equal to equal to zero return one so <clears throat> one right so the factorial of zero is one factorial of one is also one factorial four is 24 factorial five let's see for factorial five it will give you 120 fine so this logic is <clears throat> perfectly fine i have covered both the conditions i have covered one also zero also or other factorial numbers also i have covered okay now let's see second approach the second approach is that with recursive okay guys second approach is with the recursive function so what do you mean by recursive function recursive function means a function is calling itself 
right let's see i have a function a function is calling itself it means inside the function body i'm calling the same function right so let's see i'll give you an example i have one test function inside the test function i'm calling this test function only okay this is called recursive function so let's see what do you mean by recursive recursive means a function is calling itself right so let's create a function i'll create a function let's see public void and i'm calling let's see a fact okay i'm calling this function <clears throat> i'm creating this function and uh, this function will have this number <clears throat> integer number immediately i'll do one thing that um, okay i'll immediately check this condition if number equal to equal to zero it means simple return what return one so here some people are confused that okay why i'm not using braces because i'm not writing any else part over here so you don't need to write right so if number equal to equal to zero simple you can directly write no need to provide the bracket also fine this function will return an integer so i'll write into over here okay now <clears throat> So either you write like this or you can directly write with else part also. Let's say I'm writing one else. No need to write the bracket. Else what? Else simple return what? Return. I'll write inside the bracket whatever the number is there. Number multiply by. I'll call this function once again. So I'll write some space for you guys. What is the function name? Fact. Okay. Remember this thing. Whatever the number you are passing and just pass minus one and that's it okay so this is the logic see this is a function name fact and i'm calling this fact function over here again now see the logic <clears throat> how exactly it will work so it will work like this that uh, let's see i'm pass i'm calling this function i'm passing let's see three right i'm passing three so three is equal to equal to zero no it will not return one it will come inside the else part it will return it will call this function three multiply by factorial of number minus one it means number minus one means three minus one two so again this function will be called so it will go to this function once again and three minus one two number equal to two now two equal to equal to zero no two is not equal to zero again what will happen <clears throat> so initially number was three multiply by two right and again two minus one one will be given one equal to equal to zero no again three multiply by two by one again one will be one minus one zero zero will be given over here zero equal to equal to zero return one so it will be like this three multiply by two multiply by one so output will be six same rule will will be applied same logic will be applied on four five six on any number right so <clears throat> let's run it and let's see so i'll call this function so this is called a recursive function so people might ask you can you solve this problem with this so recursive means a function is calling itself inside the function body see this is a function body i'm calling this function inside the function right and simple mathematics i'm using that every time i'm just decreasing the number and calling that function again inside the function only so first time let's say i'm passing three three minus one two two will be given again three multiply by two and then again two minus one 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 equal to zero no again one minus one zero i'm passing zero equal to zero return one right so it will be like this so let's see it is working this logic is working or not so i'll do one thing system dot out dot print ln. <clears throat> i'll call this function factorial let's say i'll pass three okay and uh, i'll make it a static okay and let's see for three it should return six fine so for three it is working let's see i'm passing four for factorial four it's working 24 that is also fine i'm passing let's see for five factorial five is 120 that is absolutely fine let's see i'm passing factorial 10 so for factorial 10 it will give you this this is a factorial 10 because if you see factorial 10 will be like this 10 multiply by 9 it will be 90 90 will be multiplied by 8 so it will be around 720 720 multiplied by 7 some number 
right? So if you multiply all the numbers from 10 to 1, it will be a huge number, right? So that's why the factorial of 10 will be a big number like this, okay? So this is working. Now I'll check quickly system.out.println. Make sure that, okay, my logic is working with 1. Factorial 1 should be 1. So let's see. Factorial 1 is 1. And I'll quickly check my logic with 0 also. Factorial 0 should be 1. So factorial 0 should be 1. Right? So perfect. So all the conditions are working fine. So guys, make sure whenever you are solving the problem, right? Whenever you are solving the problem, two things. First of all, you have to check the corner cases that all the corner cases are working fine or not. Second thing is that you have to, what? You have to provide all the test cases. And the third thing is try to optimize, try to give a different way. So let's see if you check the, the complexity, right? The time complexity of this will be O n because I'm using one for loop, right? O n plus n, ultimately it will be O n. But here I'm just using like this, I'm calling this function again and again. Again, it will be O n. Right, or maybe O log n. So I don't want to get depth into you know uh, the time complexity. Maybe I can have a separate session on time, time complexity, like that. So, right. So this is about factorial. Remember, two solutions we have to give without recursive and with recursive. Very simple. Don't be confused. It's very very simple. It's a game of multiplication. That's it. Okay. So thanks for watching this video and uh, I'll be sharing more videos on my channel. So please subscribe to the channel guys. We are very near to 50,000. So in next 10, 15 days, we will be crossing 50,000. So thank you support and uh, please keep watching the series. Thanks.